Hi, I'm John Gazer in the Department of Family Medicine. Today we're going to be talking about the lower extremity exam. Uh, I'll be demonstrating uh, to how, we ins how you inspect the lower extremity, how you palpate, and then perform passive range of motion of both the hip, knee, and ankle. And we'll come back and look at some special maneuvers that look at the knee exam for people that have an injured knee. Uh, we won't be doing active range of motion today, so that would normally we'd normally be doing that after palpation before passive range of motion, and we're going to just want to make a note that we will be skipping the active range of motion in this demonstration. Uh, helping me demonstrate today is Mr. Bill Garant, and thanks for coming back, Bill. We've seen Bill before here. And uh, initially, it, like, as with any type of musculoskeletal exam, with inspection, you're looking for things like uh, deformity, um, swelling, changes in coloration when people are walking, changes in gait. Uh, we're going to start with inspecting the hip, and Bill, I'm just going to ask you to pick up your gown so we can get a, get a look at your iliac crests. I'm just going to locate the iliac crests here on either side of his uh, lower abdomen, and, and that just gives me a sense that, um, that, that he has some symmetry here uh, with his pelvis, and his legs are probably about the same length, that there's no obvious sort of muscular, uh, neuromuscular disease that would cause one side to be weak and perhaps uh, lower than the other side. Next, I'm going to take a look at his knees. We're going to be looking for any sort of deformity, and commonly with, with, with uh, people, you may see a knock knee deformity, or it's called a, a genu valgus deformity, where the knees are closer together, or a genu virus deformity, or bow legged deformity, where the knees are further apart. And, and Bill has uh, fairly normal looking, normal looking knees. I'm not going to go ahead and take a look at extension of the hip while he's standing. This is a fairly easy way to do that. So, Bill, if you could just move to the table and uh, oh, um, I'll hold it up for you. Okay. If you can just sort of support yourself here sure. so we don't lose your balance. And try to stand up straight. I'm just going to reach down and um, support your leg, and I'm just going to extend this back. And you would ex expect this to extend back about 20 or 30 degrees. Um, thanks. Well, you can also do that in the, in the prone position. Um, and then I want you to go ahead and have a seat up here, and we'll go ahead and look at the rest of the hip. Okay. Yeah, if you would go ahead and my back, please. And okay. Um, and, and please let me know if anything is sore sure. or uncomfortable as we do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull your gown up a little bit if that's okay. Yep. I'm just going to palpate um, about the pelvis for instability just to be sure there's no pain. So I'm just going to place both hands over the iliac crest and just rock a little bit if there's any pain or anything there. Bill, let me know. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's going to palpate over the greater trochanter, which is located on the lateral aspect of the thigh, and it's the large bony prominence. See if there's any tenderness there. And is that uh, no, sore at all, Bill? Okay, no. good. Um, now we're going to go ahead and look at the range of motion of the hip. We're first going to look at flexion. I'm just going to, I'm going to flex your hip up and then bend your knee, and try to we're going to try to flex this as far up in the abdomen as you can, and you should. We only get about 130 degrees of flexion here at the hip. And if you straighten your leg out, and then pick your leg up with the knee extended, and then you should normally get about close to 90 degrees of flexion here. And Bill's got good loose hamstrings, so he's uh, pretty limber. Um, now we're going to go ahead and check for internal and external rotation. So I'm going to bend your hip and bend your knee to about 90 degrees. I'm going to internally rotate the leg, and sort of paradoxically, when you internally rotate the leg, the foot goes to the outside. When I externally rotate the hip, now the foot's going to go to the inside. Okay, any soreness or pain yep. there? Sorry. Okay, good. So I'm going to uh, abduct or abduct the leg at the hip. So I'm going to pull the, the, uh, the hip away from the midline. Okay. I'm going to adduct the hip and pull it towards the, across his body until the pelvis starts to come up off the other off the table, and he's just starting to rotate now, so we'll stop there. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and uh, first just inspect the knee, looking at the patella, at the bony landmarks, at the both at the, uh, the normal concavities on either side of the patella and below the knee. Then we go ahead and check the range of motion of the knee, first by just extending the knee, and most people can get their knees to close to 160 degrees here. And then extend the knee, and most People can at least get their knees to a neutral position, zero, and many people have a little bit of hyperextension, up to 15 degrees is normal, and he just has a little bit of hyperextension at his knee here. Okay. Next, we're going to move down to the ankle, and we're going to just, again, inspect the ankle for any obvious deformity, swelling, redness, uh, bruising. 
Um, and then we're going to palpate the ankle, we're going to palpate the Achilles tendon, the medial malleolus, and the lateral malleolus, and the midfoot for any tenderness or pain. Any of that bothering you, Bill? No, no. Okay, good. Then we're just going to assess the range of motion at the ankle. So I'm going to support his leg, and I'm first going to check flexion at the ankle by grasping his midfoot and pointing his foot towards his head to dorsiflex his ankle. I'm going to point it away from his head to plantar flex his ankle. I'm next going to check uh, inversion, knee version. I'm going to support the, I'm going to um, grasp the foot at the heel. And I'm going to rotate the foot towards the midline. That'll be inverting the ankle. I'm going to rotate it away from the midline. That'll be everting the ankle. I'm next going to check uh, adduction and abduction of the foot. So I'll first abduct the foot by moving the foot away from the midline. And then I'm going to adduct the foot and move it toward the midline. I'm going to come back and look at the knee now to say if uh, Mr. Grant was presenting with a painful knee. And we sort of look, take a look at the knee a little more closely. First, we'll just again look at the knee um, and then palpate it. And we'll both we'll, uh, palpate the patella for any tenderness or discomfort. I'm going to palpate the lateral joint line at the tibiofemoral joint. Again, looking for any pain or um, bony abnormality. Then also in the medial aspect of that joint. I want to palpate the tibial tuberosity and then the uh, then the uh, popliteal space behind the knee. And there aren't any abnormalities there. Now some people with an injury might have an effusion in the knee, and I'm going to do a couple of tests now to assess, if, to see if there were, was any fluid in, in Bill's knee. I'm going to put one hand over the suprapatellar pouch, and because the, the knee um, joint space actually extends up above the patella, um, into this, into the distal, into the distal leg, and that's called the suprapatellar pouch. And this test is called Belotman. I'm just going to tap on his kneecap or his patella to see if I can drive it back into his femoral condyles. And really, there's really not much give there. And when I let go, if there were an effusion, there'd feel you'd feel a little bit of a bounce coming back, and there's not. So he doesn't really have any effusion. The other test for effusion is is called the um, bulge sign. And the way you do that is you uh, stroke the medial aspect of the knee between the patella and the femoral condyle, and you try to push the fluid up into the super, super patellar pouch. So I'm just going to firmly push a few times to try to milk any fluid that might be present from the medial aspect of the knee up into the super patellar pouch. And I'm just going to take my other hand and push on the lateral aspect of the knee between the patella and the femoral condyle, and or the epicondyle, and just see if there's a bulge on the other side, on the medial aspect of the knee. And there's not. So he uh, doesn't have any fluid in his knee. The next thing I'm going to do is test for any instability of either the, you know, the lateral collateral ligament or the medial collateral ligament. And the way you do this is you want to put different stresses on the knee. And, and we'll start with the lateral collateral ligament. I'm going to just have you bend your knee about 30 degrees. And so then he must, so with any exam, you want the patient to be as relaxed as possible, but this is probably particularly important if people have a, have a painful, um, if they've injured their knee, not, you want to take time and be slow and try to get them to relax, and su you want to support their leg and let them know before you do anything uh, so they can, they're not going to try to guard against you. And what I'm first going to do is to apply a, a uh, varus stress to the knee by pushing laterally with my hand here, at the same time pulling uh, the foot towards me to see if I can open up his lateral joint line. And anything sore tender there? No. no. Okay. Good. I'm next going to test the medial collateral ligament by applying a valgus stress. I'm going to push medially here while I push, uh, I'm going to push medially at the knee while I push laterally on his lower leg again to see if I can open up his medial joint line. Anything sore or tender there? Yeah. Good. So you'll be looking for pain or any sort of uh, laxity in the joint, and it's always important to um, compare the injured joint to the normal joint, and you should typically start the exam with a, 
uninjured joint so you have a sense about what the normal range of motion and the abnormalities about the normal joint before you move to the injured joint. I'm now going to go ahead and do some tests that assess for injuries to the cruciate ligaments.